Hello everybody, my name is Anubis Lives, and I'm your VTuber Senpai. YouTube thumbnails is something that's actually very important for a YouTube channel. It's actually the first thing that people will see when they're introduced to your content, whether that be a video or a live stream. And a lot of people think that you need expensive pieces of software such as Photoshop to make YouTube thumbnails, and that's simply not true. So in today's video, I am going to show you on how you can make your YouTube thumbnails 100% free and no subscriptions required. Make sure you watch until the end of the video because I'm going to show you some tricks that you've never seen before. But before we jump into the video, I do have one favor to ask and that is to like and subscribe. And if you happen to like the content that I'm making on this YouTube channel, by subscribing you help me unlock some extra YouTube perks. Alright, now let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually head to a website. The website is spark.adobe.com. Links for this website and all the software I'm about to mention in the description bar down below. Okay, so now that we're on Adobe Spark's website, the first thing we're gonna do is click on this little button on the top left-hand side, the little plus blue button. Okay, we're gonna click that. Then we're gonna go to custom size graphic. Now that we're here, we're gonna click on social post. And then you're gonna see one here that says YouTube thumbnail. We're gonna click that and then we're gonna click next. It's gonna load. And then once it's loaded, we're gonna see on the bottom right hand side that I'm covering up, it says Adobe Spark. You're gonna click that, you're gonna click remove once. Don't worry, it's gonna stay away forever. Okay, so now that we have a blank canvas that we can work with, we can add things like background photos, text, and so on and so forth. So the thumbnails that I tend to make on YouTube tends to be some sort of two-tone thing. Some nice image like a city skyline in the background that's a little bit blurry, and then a slash of purple down the middle or something like that gives it a sense of depth and it helps me with the purple emphasize the thing I want people to look at on the thumbnail itself. Okay, so I search Google for an image and it's an image I kind of want to use an image I kind of like. Now this background image could be anything because well, at the end of the day, we're going to kind of blur it. So what we're going to do is click on photos, then we're going to click on upload photos. In the downloads folder where our image saved, we're going to click that and then click open. It's going to take a second to load up into the application itself. Then we're going to click on this little X here. We're going to click on the photo and we're going to resize it to basically the full thumbnail. So now that we see that this is our canvas, the cool thing about this is when you click on your picture or your layer, it gives you effects on the bottom right hand side. So we've got filters and we could add things like duotone, grayscale, dark, and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna use that, nor am I gonna use any enhancements, but what I will use is the blur. So we're gonna click on blur. We added about 5% blur automatically. You could go up to as high as you want or to as low as you want. I like 5%. That's what I'm gonna do. So now that we have our base there, we gotta add our gradient image, the blue to purple, and we can actually find that for free on Google. Okay, so now that we're here at Google, we just typed in blue to purple gradient, and you got a lot of different results. But what we want to do is make sure it's free for us to use. So what we're gonna do is hit settings. We're gonna go to advanced search. We're gonna scroll down a little bit and under usage rights, we're gonna click on Creative Commons license and then click advanced search. Now these are the ones that we can actually use for our own use. Feel free, pick whatever one you want or find the image that you actually want to use as your gradient if you choose to do so. Now that we have our image, we're gonna add it to Adobe Spark and start the layering process. Okay, so now that we're back at the site once again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our photos again. We're gonna click on upload photo. We're gonna click on our untitled image and then we're gonna click open. So we're gonna give it a second to open here and then once it is, we're gonna click on the little X sign on the top here and we got this guy right here, perfect. Now, what this will allow us to do is we can twist it here and we can actually resize it here. Now, what I like to do is have the picture of myself on the right hand side and then whatever I'm trying to emphasize here on the left. So I like to do a little cut here. So we're going to move it down. We're going to make it even bigger and up a little bit and maybe a little bigger, a little bit too big. But we got kind of like a halfers look going on here. And this is personally what I like. Now, you don't have to do this 
you can just keep your background image in there if you choose to do so. But uh, this is my style and it's something I kind of want to stick with. Now what we got to do is we got to either add the image of ourself or the stuff we want to emphasize or even the text. So right now we're going to work on the image ourselves using a combination of programs, one being GIMP, another one being our avatar software itself, and another one using a particular website. Okay, so now that we have the avatar that we want on the screen, we got to take a little picture of it. Now, this is my method of doing things. You don't have to do it this way, but this is how I do it. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a program called Snip. Snipping Tools is a fantastic little screenshot program. So I'm going to make my pose. I'm going to smile. We're going to click New, and then we're going to drag and stop where we want it. So now we got the image that we actually want. We're gonna go file, save as, and we're gonna save it right here on, let's say the desktop and save. Okay, so now we need to either remove our checkered background or our green screen background from the avatar. And this we're gonna use a website for, a free website. Okie dokie, so the free website that we're at is photoshop.adobe.com forward slash cutout. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on upload file. We're gonna find the file we need, which is this one here that we labeled capture. We're gonna click open. Right now it's automatically gonna remove the background from the image. The great thing about this website is you can remove the background of any image. So say you find an image on Google you wanna use on your thumbnail, just drag it into here and the image will be removed automatically. Now that the image is removed, we're gonna click on download. We're gonna click apply and it's gonna let us download in the PNG format, and that's it, the background's gone. Okay, we are not done with the image just yet. We want to add a green highlight around the image itself, and the easiest way for us to do that is with a program called GIMP. Again, GIMP is 100% free and in the description box down below. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do drag and drop our image into GIMP. So capture, drag and drop, there we are. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add a layer. So on the bottom right hand side, right here, we're going to click on plus. We're going to just click OK. We're going to drag this layer down one. Then on this layer here that we clicked on, we're going to right click on it and then alpha to selection. That will create an outline of us. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top. We're going to click on select. We're going down to grow. I got mine on 12. You could play with it if you wish, but I got it on 12, I'm gonna hit okay. What that's gonna do is add an extra line around us. We're gonna hide ourselves. We're gonna click on the other layer down below, and we are gonna use our bucket, which yours is gonna be on by default, and we're going to dump green into it. All right, so now we got green. You could change the color to whatever you want by clicking on it, but green actually really catches a lot of people's eyes, so I suggest that you use green. Now, what we're gonna do is click on select. We're gonna click on none. Then we're gonna right click anywhere that's green. We're gonna go down to layer, or sorry, we're gonna go down to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Then what we're going to do is we're going to play with it. We're going to click plus, 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 plus until we get a nice blur effect. What we can do in the meantime is we can add our image back. So just click on the little eyeball there to add ourselves back in. And look at that. we got a nice green blur of us. I kind of like it like that. That's what we're going to go with. I'm going to click OK. Now that we got the image that we want, we're going to go to File, Export As, and then... Let's just keep it the same, capture one, export. I don't care about the older image, I'm gonna replace it. It's gonna export that and we are going to import it into Adobe Spark. Okay, so we got a lot of the long and tedious stuff out of the way. Now the next few steps is gonna be actually a lot quicker. All right, so here back at Adobe Spark, what we're gonna do is add our photo of ourselves. We're gonna click on that, we're gonna click on upload photo. We're gonna find our capture one with the green highlight. We're gonna click open. Once that is open, we're going to adjust it and we're going to move it to the position we want. So we're going to close that little X. We're going to click here and we're going to adjust ourselves to the size that we desire. 
Now, what we do have here, if your, for example, person is behind a layer right here, layer order, it, you can move it up or down. Uh, I obviously suggest that you keep it up. And don't forget, thumbnails are really, really small. And one thing I do want to point out, bottom right hand side, you want to avoid text or anything like that because that's where the timestamp is. Top right hand side is a little bit of YouTube options when people highlight their mouse over it. So bottom right, top right, you kind of want to avoid stuff. Top left, bottom left, or even the middle, you're golden. So right now we're going to add our text. We're going to add text here. The ones that are marked yellow is something that you got to pay for. But anything that doesn't have any markings, you're good to go. So we're going to click on the everything will be okay. Once it's loaded, we're going to move it and we're going to adjust it. And we're probably going to actually change the color to something that's nice and bright. Yellow tends to catch a lot of people's eyes. So I'm going to go with yellow. We're going to slant it just a little bit by clicking on this little icon here. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, we're going to then double click on everything will be okay. And we're going to click on up or we're going to not click, but type upgrade your thumbnail. Then we're going to click done. But we are not done with this thumbnail yet. I want to add an example from an old crappy thumbnail to something that's nice and enhanced, something that's click worthy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab some photos, uh, upload photo. I'm going to grab my old photo. Once it's loaded, we're going to resize it real quick by using the little bars here. And uh, we're going to resize it. We're going to make it a little bit small. And as you see, the word thumbnail covers it. We can actually change the layer order from here to one below. But we're going to do that. We're going to tilt it just a little bit because we love tilting stuff. Make it a little bit bigger. Then we're going to add the new and improved thumbnail for this particular video. Max res default. And we're going to let that load. Boom, 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 boom. boom. There it is. We're going to again tilt it. We're going to close here. We're going to move it. And I want to add a little red arrow to it to show a progress from here to here. So we're going to click on icons. We got arrow already typed in, but you could type in whatever kind of icon you're looking for. And we're going to scroll through an arrow that probably is going to fit for us. Scroll, scroll, scroll. We're probably going to use the same arrow that we have down here, which is this particular one. So we're going to click that, click this X, click on the arrow itself. We're going to change the color of the arrow to something red. Perfect. Now, what we do need to do is flip this arrow. So right here, we're going to click on flip horizontally. We're going to move it and we're going to adjust the size. So, oh, clicked on the wrong thing. Got to click on the arrow. So now we go from here to here. So now people see that, hey, we made a progression from using this regular thumbnail and we upgraded it to this particular thumbnail. And that's basically how you make thumbnails. You just add images and you change it. Now you can actually do all this in GIMP. 100% does take practice, but as time progresses and you make more and more and more, you can afford programs like Photoshop, but this is just a 100% free way. I personally been doing it and a way I kind of like doing it. Okay, so now that our thumbnail's done, all we got to do is click on the little download button, PNG, start download, and save it as a solid color PNG. And that's it. You're all done. Your thumbnail's created and you're good to go. I do apologize for the longer than normal video, but I felt like I need to get across some free ways you can get your thumbnail created. I hope you were able to follow along. If not, feel free to come into the Discord and ask me some questions, and I'll do my best to help you out with your thumbnail. Again, my name is Anubis Lewis. I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I would love for you to come by, say hi, and well, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.